Pew pew! <laughs> what is up, everybody? Dude, welcome back, Star Wars fans. I got another 3D... Let me state it now. 3D printed plastic prop. Not real. Not real blasters. Uh, so if, these are to look like the West Star 35s that Bo-Katan uh, had in The Mandalorian. Uh, I deviate a little bit from her color scheme in that. Uh, so she had the, the black and silver. Uh, but then I did like a... What I wanted to do was do kind of like a, a wood grip look on here. Um, yeah, it's so hard to show off in under these lights, but anyway, um, I'll show it in more detail later, but I painted these different colors to make it look like a wood grain. But yeah, so anyway, Waste Star 35s. These are for a good friend of mine, uh, New Type Sith. If you know, if you follow my channel, you probably already follow his, but if not, here, I'll put the thing up in the, uh, the corner here. Um, go click on that, go check out New Type Sith. Awesome YouTube channel. Awesome dude. So uh, I actually got to meet Cody in person. He lives in Minnesota where I'm originally from and I was visiting. So I got to hang out with this guy uh, for a little bit, which is so cool. Uh, dude is hilarious. Just awesome dude uh, in person. Not that there's anything wrong with your YouTube personality, but <laughs> just a whole nother level of Cody-ness in, in person. So yeah, dude. Anyway, appreciate the channel. Appreciate the content you put out there. These are just a little well, thank you from me. Just something for you. I know that you are working on a uh, cosplay. I want to say, and I, I might get it wrong, but I, I think it's like a Inquisitor slash Mandalorian cosplay. So I'm hoping that these go very well with that. I left them very clean, um, so they're not super weathered or anything. I didn't know if you know your your cosplay is going to be like a weathered down uh, cosplay, or if you wanted to keep it nice and pristine, and you know maybe put like some red stripes on here, maybe kill stripes or something. I don't know, just um, just anything, man. I know you know how to paint, so you can you can take these any direction you want to go from here. Um, but yeah, so just my thanks to you, dude. That's it. Uh, but hey, for those of you that do follow this channel because you're into this 3D printing thing and you want to see the whole process, like how did you finish these? How did you you know, make them look like this? Uh, I'm going to dive into the rest of that. And by the way, if you're really into this stuff, please click subscribe. It helps me out trying to build the channel up a little bit. Um, leave a comment, click like, you know, that kind of stuff. Really appreciate it. Uh, or if you know someone that is also into 3D printing and Star Wars, hey, share one of my videos with them. Uh, that would be totally awesome. But anyway, let's go ahead, let's get started. Let's take a look at this, the whole process. Here we go. So here are all of the pieces that come in this file from Mystery Maker Studios on Etsy. I think I've mentioned them in lots of previous videos. I'm a huge fan of Mystery Maker Studios, so go check them out. And this file is so great that it has all these little spots for alignment. You can kind of see me hammering these little columns pieces into it. Um, but it makes it real nice so that when you do go to glue it, nothing gets glued off to an edge or the side. Like everything is perfectly aligned because of all these little alignment pieces. So I like that. And then once I had everything glued together, I just tied them all up with some straps to let that glue fully dry. And then uh, we pulled it all off and got ready to start uh, sanding away. You'll have to forgive me. I'm still just a big kid. So of course, once the blasters were fully put together, <laughs> yeah, I'm a nerd, uh, whatever. <laughs> I can't stop it. All right, so uh, once we had everything glued together, um, there were some edges that needed to be filed down, sanded down, and before I went into any steps of glazing spot putty or primer or whatever, I just you know sanded directly onto the plastic to make it as smooth as I could before you know going into those other steps. All right, so here we got the glazing spot putty. This stuff is awesome for 3D printing. It really helps fill in uh, layer lines. Uh, goes on super easy, dries super fast. Just, I'm a big fan of the, the glazing spot putty. 
Uh, and then there's some detail between the top portion and the rest of the blaster that I really wanted to be nice and crisp. So I got out the needle files and kind of went up and down that a whole bunch to make it, you know, that line really nice and straight. And then uh, we grabbed some, what was that, 120 grit sandpaper and just did all of the glazing spot putty and a little bit of the plastic as well. Make everything as smooth as we could before we go into filler primer. So this Bondo gray filler primer, I really like this stuff. Uh, first time I've been used, uh, used it. Um, yeah, it, it's like lacquer based. So it dries in like two hours versus the Rust-Oleum sandable filler primer, which is water based. And it, that takes like two days to dry. Um, and it really gums up sandpaper and stuff. So this doesn't do it at all. I'm a huge fan. I'm gonna be using this filler primer from, from now on. Uh, so then we go into our painting step. Uh, yeah, I didn't need to use the airbrush for this. It's just I had um, some black paint for my airbrush. I could have just as easily done a can. In fact, I made so many errors on this. I tried painting the grips different colors um, without taping the whole blaster off. And I made so many mistakes that this actually has been spray painted black like an additional three times just to cover up the mistakes I had made. Um, but yeah, so lot, lots of layers of black on this. And then I finally decided, you know, just do it right. Just tape it off and do it right versus, you know, trying to paint really close to the edge. I don't know why I was trying to get away with that. So I finally taped it off, uh, spray painted it, espresso. And then I grabbed a bunch of these different alcohol inks to make like a faux uh, wood grain look on the handles. I got this technique from Off Earth 3D. Uh, really awesome YouTube channel. Totally recommend you go check him out. He's got some really neat paint tutorials. Um, but what I did, I, I kind of just played around on the first one until you know I figured out a system. Then you can see I flipped it over and the system seems to work a lot better here. But I started with a almond and silver mixed together. Maybe it was vanilla and silver, um, but it was a really high brightness to it. And I started with that and then I came in with the reds, and then I came in with the caramels and the mahogany colors um, to give it that nice wood grain look. So it kind of kicked back the highlights and gave it some low lights. I even did a couple little layers of black and it turned out awesome. And then I clear coated it, and I think I didn't wait long enough before I did the clear coat because it pulled some of those alcohol inks up into the clear coat. and. I don't want to say that it ruined it, but it definitely looked just a little bit better before I had done the clear coat. So yeah, I guess something I know for next time. I have to wait a little bit longer before doing the clear coat. And then I had to retape the guns all over again so that I could do the silver accents and then pull all the tape off, which is just so fun to finally pull it all off and, and see what you've made. So that's the whole process. Gosh, I just love taking the tape off of these things. It's just it's so, I just love that moment, peeling that tape back and you finally get to see what it looks like when it's all done. So anyway, hey, thanks for hanging out with me. Thank you for watching this content. I super appreciate everyone that stayed this far through the video to watch. Um, and that's all I got. May the force be with y'all and I will catch you in the next video. Why do I do that? Why? I don't know. <laughs>